YouTube, how's it freaking going? Happy hump day, day number 24 of the Impetus Strength Program, finishing off the six week, which is pretty fucking crazy to think of how much we have gone through already. Like 24 days in itself is quite a long time. And you know, we've been working hard. So today is back and bicep day, one of my favorite days. I'm not gonna lie, I actually like every day, but I know that back day definitely gives me the best pump all around, I will say. And I always love doing heavy deadlifts, even though it makes me feel like shit. I always like doing the things that uh, I don't really want to do because typically the things you don't want to do are going to make you better. However, guys, something that I don't want to do. I'm not going to lie to you guys today, probably a little bit into yesterday as well. I kind of been like kind of negative in my thoughts where, you know, I'm like, why am I doing this? You know, I'm not good enough. Stuff like that. You know, those negative limiting beliefs that everyone occurs comes in waves for me, you know, and uh, recently it's been occurring and, you know, I feel like I, I, I owe it to you guys to be open with how I'm feeling and also go, give you guys some guidance on how, like, I kind of overcome these sorts of things. Now, I know that this feeling is a temporary thing and there's, you know, there's certain things that I'm doing that cause this, such as self-comparison, right? I'm comparing myself to other people. And typically speaking, you're not going to like really compare, like you're always going to be harder on yourself than you will be on other people. That's just how it is. And if you are hard on other people, it's, you know, it's probably because you're hard on yourself and you, you know, you're lashing out, not justifying it, but you know, it tends to happen. But need to say, I am definitely feeling like unmotivated to go to the gym, unmotivated to record. I don't see like... In my mind, and I don't really like speaking about it because, you know, when you speak something, it comes more of a reality than it is in just your mind. But I'll say it just to keep you guys open. Like, I kind of think that, you know, the YouTube stuff's not going to work out for me. However, however, the reason and the reason why I'm going to continue doing it is because the only true way that this won't work out is if I give up on it. And that's the reality of it. And what type of person would I be to give up on it? Because we ain't losers out here. If you guys are watching us, you guys are probably in the roots to wanting to become a fucking winner. And if we're trying to become winners, we need to do what winners do. And that's doing shit even though they don't want to. Even though their emotions might get in the way and they might feel down like I do right now. But you keep pushing through because the feeling is temporary. But, sorry, the feeling that I'm experiencing right now is temporary. But the feeling of regret is permanent. Because I sit here and I think to myself, I'm like, okay, I'll, I have all these negative thoughts. Now, let me stop for a second. If I stopped, would I regret it later on down the road? Would I be willing to tell my dying self on my dying bed that I willingly, knowingly, and had the ability to do what I want to do, which is inspire people to become better via YouTube? And I gave up on it because of some stupid fucking thoughts that I was occurring in the moment. I couldn't be that person. I would never do that. And if you guys are watching this, don't be that person either. But that's my two cents for today. Give you guys a little openness on how I am personally feeling. Today's a beautiful day though. I mean, you know, it's very, very sunny today. I cannot complain. The warmer weather is on the horizon. Warmer weather is going to have a warmer person <laughs> i'm gonna be a happier person but i don't let the you know they, they do a bit but this season shouldn't dictate your you know your feelings and stuff i mean hey man how can you not be happy when i could go outside in my my gym fit without having to wear a freaking hoodie a jacket let my car warm up and shit like that but all complaining for no reason i'm blessed to have heat i'm blessed to have a jacket and i'm blessed to have the ability to go to gym but without further ado ladies and gentlemen it's gym time. Okay, so first exercise of the day, as per typical, is gonna be the compound movement, which of course today being a deadlift. I'm gonna try four plates. I was able to hit four plates when I was going for the one rep for two reps. Let's see if we squeeze in that extra rep. But a little tip for you guys, cleansiness tip for your headphones, for you guys that wear headphones at the gym, it's some freaking baby wipes, man. Use your baby wipes, clean them up, get rid of that odor, because they do stink after a while. I like to clean them after, but today I am cleaning it before because I have been slacking a little on cleaning them because I haven't had baby wipes nearby. That's okay though. I will throw it out, okay? I'm not gonna fucking go against my word of cleaning up after yourself, but 
I want to get this set done because this fucking belt, man, really does feel like a corset today. A corset today. So I mean, it's fucking tight. We're gonna be going for heavyweight, so I do want it as tight as I can have it. Let's see how we do, man. A little nervous to do this, but hey, if I start to feel the form give out or something in that form, that's when I'll stop. Even if it's just two, I'll take a breather. I'll get back to it, but. Let's lock the fuck in. We got three of these. <coughs> Two more. Holy fuck. I'm seeing stars when I'm doing these fucking reps. Just one more. Honestly not sure if I'm gonna be able to do this for three sets, but I'm very impressed with hitting out for three because it's been kind of a st point of it kind of stuck at at 405. I haven't really hit much higher than 405. I think I've slot tens on before, but I've been struggling with the 405. We're gonna do this for two more sets, hopefully. We'll see how we feel. I'll keep you guys posted whether or not I drop the weight or not, but when I start to feel pains in places, I'm not trying to feel it. I definitely will. Like, my fucking hand right now, <laughs> a little fucked up. But we're going to get this shit done. No excuses. We're going to give it our all. But if form starts to compromise, then, of course, got to lower the weight. We don't want to injure ourselves. Let's get this shit. Okay, so I actually ended up doing three reps, three sets for each of the deadlifts there. So I was able to get it done. I had to take a little pause in between each set. And after looking back at the footage, I noticed my butt comes up quicker than my back, which I tried to correct in my other reps. However, I didn't get any recording. So I can't confirm whether or not I actually did it correctly. However, I definitely noticed that. Thankfully, I wasn't feeling any pain though. So I guess it's uh, more of a hinge motion, right? I feel like my ass is coming up quicker than my back, which I feel like hinders my ability to lift heavier because I'm just using <laughs> really my back. So, I mean, I guess I got to get better with the form, of course. I mean, you always have room for improvement, especially with form. We're gonna work in a pull-ups. Probably gonna crush about six with the weighted, just because uh, the, the deadlifts definitely have me fatigued, so I wanna make sure that, uh, <laughs> I'm not killing myself on this, but I still wanna make sure that I'm doing it right. And unlike last week, I'm not gonna use a band if I'm incapable of hitting the six rep range. I'm just gonna drop the belt and do some body weight. And then if I struggle with body weight, then I'll use the, the band, because shout out the pull-up master who spectated me last time critiqued me and gave me the right advice is there's it doesn't make any fucking sense to use the band with the weight so might as well just drop the weight do your body weight because it's just as effective pull-ups is always a hard angle to get though so i'm gonna have to angle the camera differently it's always a little annoying but hey man <laughs> it's such a small issue we could just overcome no problem but definitely with the deadlifts form is crucial she here hit some form or rather deadlifts and uh, we were going over his form his form honestly looked better than mine did especially on that first set but after watching him, I kind of got visual cues of what I need to do, which makes it a lot easier to know what type of form you need to do. But enough said, we're gonna get right into this. Like I said, six reps, if I start to fatigue, I will lower, or rather just drop the belt and just do my body weight, because it doesn't make sense to use a band, you know, logically speaking, but let's get this shit done. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to work into our lap pull down. Obviously a supinated mid grip. Now we'll lie, on this particular exercise, I've kind of been pushing myself very hard to increase the movement, or the weight rather, to get that progressive overload. However, I'm not going to lie, parts of me thinks I'm ego lifting at times because I'm trying to increase it when I'm incapable of fully controlling it. And this particular exercise uses a lot of your forearms. So my forearms get really burnt out from doing this. 
So, I mean, I feel like if I was to do a wider grip or even just a neutral grip, I'll definitely be able to add the weight a lot easier, but because I'm also utilizing my forearms, the progressive overload on this is definitely gonna take a little longer because it's a smaller muscle, your forearms, rather than your back. So I definitely think, uh, I, you know, I push it a bit, but I'll probably do like 70 for half, 60, see 70 kilograms for half, 60 kilograms for the other half, just to push myself still. I'm still getting a bit of progressive overload, but that's still, like I said before, that's still progressive overload. If you're increasing the weight that you're lifting, even by a couple reps, it's still harder than it was last week. Even if it's one rep. Like, I mean, if you're doing 60 uh, kilograms for this, for 10 reps, and you decide to slap 170, but doing it the right way, of course. We're not fucking all the way, you know, super quick. Then it makes sense, still progressive overload. You're still getting better and pushing yourself to become better. But yeah, you know, I gotta feel it out, right? Cause the four arms get burnt out. I wanna make sure that my lats are getting burnt out. But because of the way this exercise is, it's, I definitely think it fits the forearms a little more. But I don't have any specific exercises to hit the forearms. So it's definitely good to encompass this. I also want to talk about busy gyms because a lot of people go to the gym it's super busy i mean honestly today is pretty dead so i'm pretty lucky i can get any machine that i want to and it kind of correlates with how i was talking about with the programming right like if i wanted to use this and it was taken and it was my last exercise of the day then i'm kind of struggling there and it's a little annoying because i can't really fill in but i mean there's always other lat movements you could do but of course like when you're following a program you want to stick to the specific exercises of that program so you can see that progressive overload, see that numbers increase along with your strength. But it's kind of why I don't necessarily like programs all that much just because I like that variety element. However, programs are definitely good, especially if you're getting into the gym, that way you learn new movements and it's a lot easier to follow routine. You know, you come in, there's obviously that anxious element when you first start off at the gym cause it's busy and you think everyone's looking at you and you want to figure out what movements to do and then of course when you're doing it you feel like everyone's watching you to make sure you're doing it right and all that shit which isn't true but of course like i was like that too when i started and i had a specific workout program that i had i developed one and i actually have it written down still on my phone from when i really got serious about the gym which i'll definitely make a video about once i'm done this program so you guys can see how i used to work out which is pretty fucking intense <laughs> that's when your boy was trying to lose weight real fast but enough said i'm gonna do this for 10 reps like i said half of which probably 70 another half 60 kilograms i'm gonna see how it feels i don't want to compromise the form and what i mean by form is it's pretty simple right you bring it down you bring it up but number one i want that full stretch and number two i want to control the eccentrics because if you're not controlling the eccentrics you're really limiting the amount of um progress you're gonna make. I'm trying to work a better word. The, the amount of uh, efficiency of the exercise, there's a different word I'm trying to think of. Effectiveness of the exercise. There you go, but let's get this shit done. Full stretch. So far, so good. Two more. But I noticed on that last rep there, I didn't bring the bar below my chin. So let's lower it. Right in the preacher curls. Like similarly to the lap pull downs, this is definitely another movement that I was trying to increase a little quicker than I needed to. 
And uh, I was trying to do 80s, maybe even, I remember I was trying the 90s, but I know like I was using my fucking body to really get it up. And that's not, that's not what I'm trying to do. It's just compensating, because I'm trying to ego lift. <laughs> but I got two sets of this. Y'all gotta get familiarized with supersets and implement them into your workouts because supersets are fucking phenomenal. Sometimes people like to do supersets with opposing muscles. They like to do like a back, then a chest. Kind of allows your muscles to rest because I am using my biceps when I'm doing lat pull downs. Right, there's compass in those movements so it's getting a double whammy, but supersets, definitely something to encompass in your workout because you can get the maximum gains. And if you're at a gym, busy gym, you're cutting your workout in half, so remember that. All right, we're gonna work into the, let me get the weight first, but we're gonna work into our back extensions. We finished off the lat pull downs there, and I can't confirm my freaking biceps or forearms are burning, but I heard something very interesting in a podcast that I wanna say, and I'm gonna put it more in a context of the gym, but I'll give you guys the originality of it. So basically the guy said, uh, if you, if I could guarantee that you make $3 million in three years, but you have to put into work every single day, would you do it, right? In the context of the gym, if I could guarantee that you're gonna get the body that you want in three years, would you put in the work every day? Most people would say yes. And the reality of it is, if you do put in the work and don't stop putting in the work, you are limitless. And you could achieve anything you want. But a lot of people won't look at it that way. They'll look at it as, for example, in the financial situation, oh, I'm not gonna make that money. Oh, that's so far-fetched. There's so many different limiting beliefs that people play, place upon themselves, but you don't need belief to take action, right? And the actions speak louder than any belief any ever could, right? If you continue doing something, you're gonna progressively get better at it and get, you know, in, in terms of the gym, you're just gonna continue to get more in shape, more better in lifts or whatever your goals may be in the gym. It's just gonna be continuously getting better, right? And there is no secret to success. Success is consistency. Doing it every single day, doing the work, doing what needs to be done, regardless of how you feel. Similarly to what I was talking about when I first started in the car there, about how I was feeling a little down. Well, consistency doesn't give a fuck if you're down. Motivation kinda does, because you know, you're know you not gonna be motivated when you're down, but that's where discipline kicks in. But I wanna sit around and talk too much. Just really think about that, because you know if you really do put in the work, you can't really achieve anything you want to, especially if you do the right work, right? And if you come in with that belief system in yourself and your abilities and understand that your limitations are what you place upon yourself and that you truly don't have limits, to a certain extent, of course. I mean, if we're talking in context of the gym, there are certain limits you'll have. I mean, I'm not gonna go past the certain point on this because then I'll fuck up my knees or my back or something like that. But in general, limitations are something that you place upon yourself. And don't limit yourself. You guys truly are, you guys have unlimited potential, right? You guys are limitless, you have to say. You guys gotta live your life like that because you only have one shot at this shit. You gotta make it count. But enough said, we're gonna get this fucking set done. We got 235s. God damn, this is heavy, man. <laughs> we'll see how this works. Uh, one. Two. Four. I think I gotta lift the plates back up, but I'm not fucking doing that though with the 235, 70 fucking pounds. I ain't trying to kill myself. We're gonna do this for three sets. Get a su Actually, I got a super set with the hammer curls, but it is three sets, so let's get this shit. I'm a little far from my phone right now and it keeps freaking beeping on and off that it's connected through my beats. <laughs> but we got 10 reps of this. I feel like I should definitely have my phone nearby because it keeps fucking disconnecting every time I'm doing a rep and it's a little annoying, but definitely bigger problems out there. We're gonna do this for two sets, or two more remaining sets, three sets total. Remember, the name of the game is the, uh, limit the time in between. I'm trying to think of the word, the effort. 
you don't want to rest in between. You want to get it done as soon as possible. Just go exercise the exercise. How will you maximize the superset, right? And hammer curls are phenomenal. I love me some hammer curls. Good for your forearms. And you can lift a little heavier. So, I mean, hey, if you guys want to lift a little heavier than your typical curls, definitely add these in your workouts. But don't just specifically do these. Because remember, three heads of the bicep. You want a movement. Elbows in front. A movement with the elbows behind. And then a movement where the elbow is in line with your body. All of which are going to hit different portions of the bicep. Short head. Long head. And then broncoli. Bronchi. Or whatever the fuck. <laughs> but there's three different heads. And all three different movements are going to hit each portion. So you get a full bicep workout to grow your bicep the best way possible. Enough said. Two more sets. Let's get this shit done. I feel like there's something else to add to what I was saying about the programming. And why, like... Programs are definitely good, but also have their negatives, especially if you utilize them the wrong way. One way that I was thinking of then, because I was writing down my move, my uh, weights that I've been doing, which is definitely something you should do regardless if you're doing a program or not. That way you know what you're doing for it and you can progressively overload it. Which makes sense, right? But what I was trying to get at is sometimes when people follow programs and like even for myself, like I, I, I don't know why, mentally I was thinking about doing it just to make myself feel better. But essentially, when I first start off, I'll do a lower weight. That way, I know I'm progressing and getting stronger because I'm doing a weight lower than what I could usually handle. Which is definitely something you guys want to avoid, right? And it kind of, when you write down weights, you write down what you struggle with, right? Or rather, what you could do to a certain extent for a certain amount of range with the right form and all that stuff. Struggling in general, I shouldn't bite around the bush. It's struggling, right? If you guys are struggling with it, then that's definitely a weight that you want to write down. But if you're not struggling with it and you're kind of setting a baseline where you guys want to be able to improve on for yourself just because of some egotistical reasoning, like let's say for these curls, for example, you want to do, I don't know, I could do 30s, right? Or rather 25s I'm doing today because unfortunately no one put the fucking 30s away. Put away your weights on the side note. But anyways, back to topic at hand. If I'm doing 25s and I know I can handle the 25s for like 10 reps or something like that, and then, then, you know, when I first start out, I decide that I'm going to start off with like 20s because I want to lowball it. That way I can improve upon it. Then that's just wrong to do, right? You don't want to do that types of shit. You want to improve on what you guys are already struggling with because that's how you're going to get better. You don't want to lowball it. That way you know mentally that you're going to get better and it makes it feel better that you increase the five pounds, even though that's already what you guys can fucking do. Don't do that shit. It doesn't make sense. And another thing that I personally like more so on the off side of doing a program is the ability to like gauge when I'm feeling fatigued, right? Of course, like if you're not feeling fatigued at the end of your workouts, you're not pushing yourself hard enough, in my opinion. And what I mean by pushing yourself isn't stupidly pushing yourself, but pushing yourself the right way, making every rep count, control those eccentrics, all that sorts of stuff. But I know that when I'm, when I'm following a specific program, you know, I definitely feel the fatigueness. However, I definitely feel it a lot more when I'm doing a non-program because like, I can just throw in a bunch of different fucking movements, right? Like I don't really rest. If I'm waiting for a machine, I'll do the machine beside it and then I'll do a machine after it or whatever the case may be. Just a variety of movements. And that's kind of why I like the randomness of not following a program. But there's definitely benefits to following a program as well. So, I mean, I'm not trying to knock it. I'm just kind of giving you guys my two cents on it. But anyways, we're gonna work in the short, small, wow. Close grip rows, <laughs> short grip rows, close grip rows. I'm gonna go heavier today. I'm gonna do 10 reps, I'm gonna go heavier because it is good to have a mixture of control reps along with reps that are a little heavier, but you're still having the right form, right? I'm not controlling it as much. It's not like I'm just like this, but I'm not gonna control it as much. I'm gonna increase the weight somewhat of the cheat reps probably going into later on, which is okay if you add a couple of cheat reps into your workouts, but not whole centerizing around it. It's good to have variety, right? You know, play around with your is isometric, concentric, and eccentric movements, right? And if you guys don't know what that is, I have a video out of that. You gotta, you gotta go check it out. <laughs> I can't remember exactly the video, but we'll go over it again exactly with the concentric, eccentric. I should just say it. Concentric obviously is the concentric here. Eccentric is the full stretch. Or sorry, is isometric. Isometric, I said eccentric. Isometric is your full stretch and then the eccentric is your negative. So the concentric, iso isometric, and the eccentric being the negatives. So you wanna control the negatives, 
but you also want to throw around, you know, maybe sometimes good centric, it's holding and squeeze and eccentrics. You don't really care about the eccentrics, but you really want isometric. I think it's that eccentric. Isometric. I don't know why it isn't that. It should make sense, right? All centrics, but <laughs> isometric because you want to get that full range, right? Really get that full range of motion, maximize the gains. But enough said. We're going to get into this 10 reps and then right afterwards, we're going to be doing a form of incline curls. Like usual, the benches are all taken and I don't want to fucking walk all the way down there. Just use the bench and hog the bench when everyone else is trying to use it. But let's get this shit done. There's definitely a possibility that I went over the 10 rep range, but that's okay. I'd rather go over than under. But now we're gonna do our curls. Remember, this is the long head, so I want the elbows behind my body. So I'm gonna sit on the edge of the seat and lean back into it. This is another good exercise, or rather tool to keep in your toolbox when the gym's busy, is the ability to use a machine for a multitude of different exercises. Because you can do it. I definitely have to encompass some busy, workout superset or sorry busy gym workout supersets that you guys can do so let's crush your shit <sighs> I wish the 30s were available, but the 25s are definitely doing a trick. But this is the last superset of the day. We've got two more sets though. We're gonna make sure that we make every rep count. Let's finish the way we started, which is putting our best foot forward. We are fatigued, we are a little bust, <laughs> a little tired, but it's not an excuse to not get it done the right way. So let's do this shit, let's finish off strong. Workout is all done, day number 24 in the books. There was two geese standing on, or rather, yeah, I guess standing on top of uh, the bank there, and they were beaking or barking at, or whatever you call it, so you want to call it like, uh, fuck, I freaking the word here, man, chirping or whatever the case may be. I little geese, and it was fucking funny. I was trying to get a video of it, but they were just sitting up there. I could just imagine, like, fuck you, fuck you, talking shit to each other. Geese are fucking vicious motherfuckers for you guys that don't live in Canada. Those guys are, I feel like they're more, more than just in Canada, but they're definitely pretty prominent in Canada, and fuck, they are mean motherfuckers they bite my ankles all the time at work but it's pretty funny they were beefing each other workout was great though i'm not gonna lie i'm very impressed with uh, hitting 405 for three reps for three sets and uh definitely growth definitely growth there i mean my lower back's a little sore but um, i'm assuming that's because of the back extensions which the name of the game of that is to hit the lower portion of the back but definitely doesn't feel nice i definitely think the, the lower back being a little sore is uh can be indicated that I'm doing a deadlift improperly or I'm doing a certain exercise improperly, but I know that specifically that exercise hits it. And if it starts to hurt over a long duration of time, definitely something to uh, look into. Because remember, pain, your body giving you pain is signals to you and messages to you from your body that you need to slow down or whatever the case may be, allow yourself to rest, recover, because as I have said before, rest and recovery is crucial to your growth, ladies and gentlemen. But I hope you guys had a blessed day yesterday and today i mean i i was going home from work yesterday and i noticed well i didn't notice but i seen a car got into a big freaking accident so if you guys got home safely as i did i it's just a blessing man you know like i feel really bad for the person who got into that accident it just comes out of nowhere and uh my thoughts and prayers are with that person because i just want people to be better i want people to feel good and i want people to enjoy life right and you know shit happens yeah and you learn from it but definitely sucks to experience those types of things personally i've never experienced those things knock on wood and uh i mean that's it's not really anything to brag about i mean shit like you got to be careful needless to say and i'm very blessed to have not gone into anything of misfortune of that kind but let's kill today guys 
Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Your boy's on route to hit 1,000 subscribers by April 1st. At the time of this recording, we are at 783. The growth has been steady. And without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do it. Without you guys, I wouldn't be motivated to continue going. I mean, today, like I said, I wasn't very motivated, but this, that's where discipline kicks in. But definitely feels really good to see that, uh, you know, people are appreciating the work that I'm putting out and that I am changing even one life. If I'm changing one life, my mission is a success. That is my goal. And that is what I want to do. Become better and bring you guys along with me on the journey. Hit that post notification bell so you guys never miss a video. Drop a comment down below which you guys are grateful for because I am always curious to know what you guys are grateful for. And you can never be grateful for too much, guys, because there's so fucking much to be grateful for. You guys should be grateful for the device you guys are watching this on. But have a buzz day. Get to it. And guys, find your business. Goodbye.